an agenda. Uh, Lisa, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Can you talk about Stand Your Ground? Most people probably think that that was the defense of George Zimmerman in the trial, though, in fact, it wasn't. Why is it significant? Well, even though the defense in the Zimmerman case did not ask for the legal grant of immunity that that law would have potentially given him, the fact is that the NRA, through changing that law in Florida, through getting Stand Your Ground enacted in Florida in 2005, got the jury instructions changed. And so even though uh, it's, it's popular wisdom to say that that law was not an issue in this case, in fact, it was, because the exact instruction of the jury was that Zimmerman had no duty to retreat and had a right to stand his ground and meet force with force, including deadly force. That's a direct quote from the jury instructions. Those jury instructions incorporate the stand your ground law. And so uh, I think that's significant. It's also significant that that law, which affects the definition of justifiable homicide, uh, has been enacted in state after state in more than two dozen states at the urging of the NRA and at the urging of the American Legislative Exchange Council. And we've also seen during this time an increase in the number of claims of justifiable homicide. But that's not all the law does. That law, which was secretly voted on at a closed door meeting um, in Florida, in uh, Texas in 2005, after it passed in Florida, ratified by an ally committee that was headed by Walmart, who is the largest seller of ammunition uh, in the in the in the country, uh, retail ammunition in the world. Um, that law actually also makes it extremely difficult for families to get justice in the civil courts, because what it actually does, and I think this is fundamentally immoral, is it says that the family of a shooting victim must pay the shooter's legal fees and lost wages if the judge in a civil case grants, uh, basically grants that uh, George Zimmerman had immunity because he had a right to stand his ground and that he, that he was, in essence, um, justified in, 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 in the killing. And so basically the NRA and ALEC put their thumb on the scale of justice in favor of the shooter. The notion that a, a grieving family would be required to pay the killer of their child if they don't prevail in that civil suit, if the, if the court uh, rules on stand your ground in favor of George Zimmerman is just astonishing to me. But it already, I think, affected this case because clearly the jury was instructed that George Zimmerman had a duty to not retreat and had and had had no duty to retreat and had a right to stand his ground. Those are the express words. Even though a law enforcement agency urged George Zimmerman to stay in his car and not pursue Trayvon Martin, that night in Florida, one man, in my view, was looking for trouble, and one kid was just looking for home, and that kid was trying to find a way home to his dad's house. But another man, armed with a deadly weapon, ignored the police dispatcher's request that he stay in his car, but he didn't. And in fact, Florida law and the law in dozens of states in the country has been changed to say that people like Zimmerman have no duty to retreat and have a right to stand their ground. And that uh, puts many, many people in this country in danger.